Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I paint my 14th Army World War II Indian miniatures. British and Commonwealth infantry in the 14th Army can be a little tricky to get right. Hopefully this guide will help with that. These battlefront miniatures are absolutely fantastic, but are currently out of production. So if you can get your hands on some, I'd highly recommend it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more 14th Army painting guides. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're going to look at some Indians for my 14th Army project. So to start off with, I'm going to be base coding them in gunship green. So the 14th Army used a jungle green um, sort of uniform colour. So we're going to capture that with this gunship green. It's quite bright, um, so I'm going for more of a uh, newer look to the uniform. But when you're talking about 15 mil, you really need to... Uh, sort of pay attention to the fact that you're going to need to make them a little bit brighter because they're smaller so that's what we're doing here and then we are going to paint their turbans in deck tan so from what i've seen they were white i'm really not too sure in terms of um, sikhs as a religion um, so i'm not sure if different colors mean different things so i uh, probably need to research that a little bit more but from what i could tell white was a pretty common color so i'm going to go with white or a creamier colour for their turbans. And then for the webbing, Russian Uniform World War II is my absolute go-to for any sort of mid to late war British webbing. It's a really good colour, um, It's it really is a nice colour <laughs> uh, and it sits really nicely on the webbing and gaiters. So you can paint the gaiters in this colour too. Um, and as you can see, I'm just painting it all uh, as a base color so I'm not really worrying about trying to leave any of the um, darker brown uh, to highlight any of the detail I'm just smothering it on with the color and then I'm painting uh, the entrenching tool in flat earth and if he had a rifle or some sort of brain gun or if he had the sten with the wooden stock or anything like that any wood I would paint with flat earth and then for the water bottle, I'm using English uniform. Um, and you can see that I'm just putting it in the four uh, quarters of the water bottle. Just use a fine brush here and just dab it on. You don't need to. If you make a mess, we're going to go over and wash, so it doesn't really matter. And then for the top of the water bottle, so the lid, I'm just painting that in old wood. It was like a cork um, color, so old wood does it nicely for the fact that we're going to have to try and brine it up so it doesn't blend into the English uniform that we just did. And then if you want to know how I painted the mortar rounds, it's really straightforward. I just use brown violet as the base coat colour. Um, you can obviously paint red. I believe red was uh, for smoke rounds uh, and there's other different shades of green that you could have painted these as well. Now I'm painting the turbine in pale grey wash. Okay, so that was an absolute fail. Uh, pale grey wash sucks. So I'm going with a nor oil uh, thin down at about a one to one ratio. So it's a black wash basically. You can wash that down. Uh, it highlights the details of the turban a lot better than that grey wash. And then for the rest of the miniature, I'm just gonna coat it in umbar wash. So that's the entire uniform, the webbing, the water bottle, entrenching tool, mortar round, gaiters, the whole lot. And you can be pretty generous, but just make sure that you're going back over it with a drier brush and just making sure that none of that wash is pulled. If it pulls, you're going to get really dark areas of that wash color. And then this part is very simple. I'm just going back over with all those colors that I did initially. And this time I'm picking out the, the um, bits of the uniform that stand out and I'm leaving the darker color in the recesses just so it gives us these sort of highlights. So this is an um, our first layer that we're gonna put on the uniform and you can see that I'm building it up so I use like a scratching technique um, I just scratch away until I'm happy if you put a big blob on you're just gonna go oh man I've, I've taken up too much of the surface area here so if you scratch away and just do little bits at a time you're gonna build it up and you're gonna be really happy and you'll find that you won't make too many mistakes so English uniform again over the water bottle and you can see already that it's just starting to brighten up uh, but that darker English uniform that's been washed is sitting on the outer edges um, and then we're building up the middle part. 
exactly the same with the wood so we're going with flat earth again and we're just building up that layer uh, painting probably about 75 percent of of the object uh, but leaving that darkened color obviously in the in where the shade or well, shadow would be and going over that mortar round with brown violet and i'm scratching from the top down as if the sun's hitting the top of the the mortar round and i'm also getting the wings of that mortar round Now I'm going back over the turbine, so I'm using deck tan for that and I'm just picking out all the creases that I can see. Obviously uh, this is where I had the pale grey wash um, and you can see that it really just didn't look any good. And don't forget to do the top as well, so the black wash will come into this uh, soon enough. And then for his shoes I'm going to use black, just straight up black. Um, when I do the base I uh, do a lot of dry brushing and that will um, get rid of the sharpness of the black and it will weather the boots and also the bottom of his legs which is what you want they're fighting in India so you want them to be quite dirty and you've got a tabletop ready model now you can go ahead paint his flesh and he'll be good to go but we want to take it to the next level so to do that we're going to highlight so we go gun shoot gunship green and Russian uniform World War II and we go at a one-to-one -one ratio and you can see again I'm scratching away and I'm picking out all the details so this is the highlighting stage so I'm only painting little bits here and there and I'm picking out where those um, areas of his uniform are protruding um, and sticking out and picking out all the little details so the curves in his knee and the leg folds etc now for the webbing it's exactly the same technique so I'm just painting on the very tops of the straps. Uh, I'm painting like a little U where the strap meets the shoulder. Uh, and yeah, just picking out all the detail. So where the two bits meet, I might put two little dashes. Um, yeah, anything like that. And then for the wood, I'm using orange brown. So it's a very bright color, but it's really good for wood, especially at this scale. You can tell it's, it's a wooden object. So just dabbing it on and just making sure that I'm happy with it little bits at a time and you'll build that up until you're happy. Now for the water bottle I'm using khaki grey and I'm just dabbing again in the very middle of it just making that pop um, and you'll see the results pretty quickly and you'll be like wow this water bottle looks fantastic. Not that many people will be looking at this scale but hey um, as long as you're happy that's the main thing. And then for the top of the water bottle, so the lid, I'm using Iraqi sand to highlight that. And I just do like a little U or just the very outer edge of it and you can see that there's a lid there. And then for the mortar round, I'm using brown, violet and green, grey at a one to one ratio. And I'm just scratching the very top of the surface so the two will blend in together quite nicely and also hit the wings and then for the turban I'm using white so I'm just doing my little details here and there and just building it up really nicely uh, until I'm happy with how it looks and don't forget the very top of the turban as well so we just want to make sure that we're getting that top of the turban and we're just hitting it with little dabs and little lines uh, just to show that it's obviously conforming to uh, the miniature's head or the man's head. Okay, so now for the flesh, I use base flesh from AK Interactive. Um, this is uh, like a sort of a medium or a light brown sort of uh, skin tone color. So this works really well uh, for the Indian skin tone, in my opinion. And then I use sepia wash uh, just to pick out all the details um, and I sort of water it down a little bit uh, and just make sure I'm hitting all the details and not letting that pool as well. And as I always do, I'm going back over the wash once it's dried and I'm using base flesh for that as well. And I'm picking out the top of the head, the cheekbones, the chin, the nose, fingers, bits of the arm, uh, elbow, anything that you can see that's uh, going to be exposed to sort of sunlight or light um, that's what you want to be picking and then finally I'm going to highlight with base flesh and light flesh at a 50-50 ratio or one-to-one -one ratio 
and you can see there I'm just picking out the tops of the arm, the crease where the uh, elbow meets the um, forearm, the fingers, the thumb, top of the hand, cheeks, elbow, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I said elbow, cheeks, nose, any of that. And then they've got facial hair, so I'm using German camo black brown to go over the facial hair. And also the back of the turban where the hair also comes out a little bit. And then at this stage, it really is up to you. Obviously, they're quite dark. Facial hair is normally quite dark. Uh, I've got like black facial hair. So I went with flat brown. I'm not 100% happy with it. So I did some in gray. Uh, it's just up to you. And then there we go. So that is it. Really straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, they don't take too long, but they look fantastic when they come out. Now I've got a whole big 14th Army project going. So if you haven't checked that out on my socials, please go and let me know. Uh, what you think of it go check them out i'm on instagram and facebook these will be used at flames of war tournament uh next week actually um so i'll let you know how it goes maybe do a little video on how they perform uh but yeah if you've enjoyed this please let me know below if you're new here please um like share and subscribe it really does help the channel grow but other than that i really appreciate you guys watching and i will catch you at the next one thanks